All right, so we got a dish situation on our hands here. Good news, sort of, I guess. Dish dials up 5G carrier aggregation testing in their 600 megahertz licenses. Monica Alvin, and this is Fierce Wireless. Okay, so I haven't really read through this or anything, but let's take a look at what Dish is going to do. All right, so they put in for some FCC filing that they want to do some carrier aggregation uh, testing for their 5G technologies in Wyoming. The STA, which is something traditionally what carriers have to do before they actually, you know, launch different types of connections. So, for example, like Verizon and AT&T and T-Mobile had to do this with C-Band before the auction and all that. Uh, these tests involve the 600 megahertz band. That is their N71. Yes, the same frequency range that you see that T-Mobile uses for their N71. Uh, separate filing for the same location. Looks like they're also going to be testing AWS. That would be band 66 LTE, but that's not what Dish is doing. All their stuff is 5G. So I'm assuming that's going to be their N70. All right, so that's pretty cool. And all this has been granted. So they're going to be testing that. This is major because they have to create capacity with what they have. And they have to do it in a greenfield way. This is not LTE carrier aggregation. This is 5G NR. So the technologies and the network core and all of those things are brand spanking new. There is no precedence of these types of settings and operations on networks. So they, they own licenses in N70 in the following ways. They got 1.7 gigahertz here. Uh, you see a couple of them. And then you see also the 2.1 gigahertz there at the bottom. Uh, all that is noted here because they have uh, they have download spectrum, like dedicated download, and then they have dedicated upload, and then they have paired spectrum. And that's why you see those three different ranges kind of representing that. So they got 600 megahertz. They got the 2.1. They got the 1.7. Don't forget, they technically have N26. They have to buy at the 800 megahertz from Sprint. They do have, in some places, the 700 megahertz N29. And then they also have CBRS, which is 3.5 gigahertz. They have 47 gigahertz V-band millimeter wave in some places. That won't be major for them for a while. But they also have the DoD 3.45 gigahertz C-band. They have a ton of spectrum, actually. Quite the portfolio. So they need to get this aggregation situation going. Uh, they are... I think combining A block licenses here, talking about 600 megahertz, the E and the F blocks, which is owned by Comcast, they're testing that in Nashville. So that's kind of cool. We'll be on the lookout for that as they request that. That's pending. Uh, let's see what else they're going to be testing here. Okay. Uh, da -da, I don't see anything else mentioned here. Uh, okay, I think we're golden. I think that's pretty much the major piece of this. All right, so... What DISH has in terms of spectrum, they need to incorporate and aggregate together. And, of course, what makes this a little bit more complicated is that, you know, DISH is trying to use the ORAN strategy. This ORAN means that they don't have to stick to one vendor for hardware and software. So they don't need to just get hardware from Nokia or Ericsson. They can use other providers from other places that provide hardware and software too, and like network core operations. And that's going to supposedly, in, it, in theory, and it should, save them a lot of money and offer them a lot of flexibility. The problem is it's very early in ORAN, and stuff may not be speaking to one another. Trying to get it all to mesh and work together and be integrated, that's probably what the holdup is. And that's probably why a lot of us are like, why aren't we seeing more DISH stuff? Why aren't we getting more updates? Why aren't they aggregating carriers? You know, we look at what Carlos S. Tech is doing, with his testing, with the access to the network and all that, that's pretty much it. But when they do launch, right, and Vegas is coming and they got these other markets, hopefully this carry aggregation stuff is going to be ready to go because they can create a ton of capacity. They have a lot of spectrum, and uh, it's really up to them. But the nice thing is is they won't have a lot of customers. So if you sign up for dish service, it's going to be plenty fast, even if the 5G carry aggregation isn't just ready just yet. But once they do that, you will see speeds very akin to T-Mobile and Verizon on C-Band and N41 once they get the carry aggregation going. What do you guys think? Sound off in the comment section below. You are the voice of the people of the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard. Please do like, share, and subscribe for more and turn on the bell notifications to never miss an upload. Links in the description for my Patreon, Twitter, and email. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Peace.